During the summer of 2015, 22-year-old Morgan Heimer was working as a commercial guide for Tor West, a Wyoming-based rafting company that organized trips all over the country. The Cody native was on summer break from studying English at the University of Wyoming and was putting his skills and passion as an outdoorsman to use in order to save for some beer money. Morgan was a popular and competent employee, and his talent for being a river guide was evident from the get-go. Within just a few weeks, he had become a trusted part of Tor West's team and was chosen to accompany a group of clients to the Grand Canyon National Park in northern Arizona. It was Morgan's dream come true. He was actually being paid to indulge in his passions, so naturally he was very excited over the upcoming rafting trip. Little did he know, it was a trip that he would never return from. June 2nd of 2015 marked the sixth of eight days rafting down the Colorado River, and it had been smooth sailing thus far. Yet around 4 p.m. that day, as the team rested on a cliffside near a geothermal hot spring named Pumpkin Springs, Morgan approached the lead guide and asked to talk to him in private. Then, as they strolled out of earshot, Morgan asked permission to take some time off that afternoon. Since they were still in the middle of a rafting trip, there wasn't exactly much for Morgan to see or do in that area, and even though he seemed sound in mind and body, the lead guide asked Morgan if everything was okay. Morgan replied that he was fine, but before the lead guide could get to the bottom of the issue, they were called away at the request of one of their clients. After telling Morgan that they'd continue the talk after seeing to their clients, the lead guide started making his way back towards the group. He was expecting the young college student to follow him, but when he turned around, Morgan was gone. The lead guide later said that he believed that Morgan had simply gotten frustrated and had wandered off on his own with every intention of returning. The reality was very different, as Morgan Heimer was never seen again. The lead guide and a handful of the company's clients mounted a brief preliminary search for Morgan, calling out his name wherever they went, but not a single trace of Morgan could be found. So at exactly 7.26 p.m., the lead guide contacted both police and park rangers to report Morgan missing. The following morning, a large group of search and rescue personnel traveled over to the Grand Canyon National Park to begin searching for the missing student. At first, the group was hopeful. Morgan's physical fitness and his knowledge of the outdoors meant that he had a better chance than most at surviving the wilderness. But after 48 hours of Morgan's continued absence, they began to fear the worst. The general consensus among the search and rescue teams was that Morgan had suffered some kind of fatal accident. Some suspected he tripped or stumbled while walking near the edge of a cliff, but after sweeping the surrounding areas, Morgan's body was nowhere to be found. Rescue personnel then considered the possibility that Morgan had fallen to the river and drowned, yet despite an extensive search of the lower portions of the Colorado River, no human corpses were discovered. It seems bizarre that Morgan couldn't be found after wandering off from the group as he was wearing brightly colored clothes and carried a purple water bottle. It seems bizarre that Morgan couldn't be found after wandering off from the group as he was wearing brightly colored clothes and carried a purple water bottle. It wasn't like his body would be difficult to spot if he'd fallen down a cliff and it was only so far that he could float downstream before ending up in a lake somewhere. This was also assuming that Morgan had suffered some kind of head trauma before falling into the water, as by all accounts, he was physically strong and a confident swimmer. It's an extremely rare event that people disappear without a trace while visiting one of our nation's national parks, but chillingly, that's exactly what appears to have happened to Morgan. Even after the initial six-day search was called off, Park rangers continued to patrol the river between River Miles 211 and 225 and mounted almost continual foot patrols around Pumpkin Springs. Rangers and volunteers scoured the area for months, but once again, not a single thing was found. It was as if Morgan had simply dropped off the face of the earth. Most agree that the most likely explanation lies somewhere in the region of tragic accident 
and that the Colorado River played a major part in ensuring Morgan's body would never be found. But even all these years later, neither his remains nor his belongings have ever been recovered, and this pushes us to consider other, less conventional means of explanation. Morgan isn't the only person to suddenly and inexplicably go missing while touring a U.S. national park, but like we've already touched on, he's been unlucky enough to be part of a small group whose bodies have never been recovered. Although many like to suggest that the park's wildlife would quickly and savagely dispose of any human remains, scavengers are unlikely to consume a maroon baseball cap or a purple water bottle, both of which were in Morgan's possession at the time of his disappearance. So, if Morgan's remains are lying at the bottom of the Colorado River, and they weren't recovered from the surrounding national park, where exactly did he go? It's not out of the realm of possibility that Morgan Heimer simply walked to the nearest highway, hitched a ride to the Mexican border, and started a new life for himself south of the border. But if that is what happened, he's yet to contact a heartbroken family who have publicly pleaded with him to get in touch on several different occasions. Beyond this, the only explanations are as preternatural as they are terrifying.